an altar call would play, the music would play, and the pastor would call for sinners. He'd, he'd call for people that needed a touch, people that needed healed, and, and I'd start shaking, and I'd start weeping, and, and I didn't know why, but it was, it was the Spirit of God. Amen. And uh, I felt that drawing to the front. I felt that pulling. It was like a giant hand wrapped right around me. It was pulling me. But I didn't want to go. I was, I was scared. I was nervous. I didn't, I didn't know what was going on. And uh, someone came to me and they asked me if I, if I wanted to go to the front with them and get prayer. And I said, no, 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 I don't want to go. I don't want to go. But I went back the next weekend and, and sure enough, the same thing happened. Uh, I sat through the preaching. The preaching was kind of boring and dry. But all of a sudden, that, that music started to play, and I felt that pulling again. And I, and I knew I had to go up. I knew I had to surrender. And, and that's when I gave in. That was about 13 years ago. And, uh, you know, I've, I've made mistakes along the way, but, but everybody does, amen. Uh, that's the thing when we come to the Lord. Uh, we're no longer bound, but we've been f set free, amen. amen. Uh, I went to, for coffee with one of my brothers today, a brother in the Lord. And we talked about the freedom there is in God. And uh, this man used to preach a lot. And he used to say, tell, tell about a dream that he used to have about a man that was in a prison cell and, and how that prison cell is now open and, and how we don't have to be bound anymore. We've been set free. It's up to us to step out of the prison cell. It's up to us to step out of bondage. Amen. amen. We have been set free. And uh, how have we been set free? We've been set free by the blood of the Lamb. Amen. That breaks every yoke, that breaks every yeah, chain, that sets men free. Amen. 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 Glory to God. If you have your Bibles, turn to the book of Jeremiah, chapter 29. Uh, like Bishop said, I probably won't be very long tonight. Hallelujah. Jeremiah, chapter 29, verse 11. You have it to say amen. Yeah. And the Bible says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, yeah. saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an ex expected end. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, God says that I, that I know the thoughts that I have towards you. I know the plans that I have towards you. Amen. Yeah. I, I've got a plan for your life. And, and that's why <coughs> suicide couldn't grip you. And that's why those drugs couldn't kill you. And that's why that rollover couldn't destroy your family. It's because God has a plan for your life. Yes. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Before, before you were in your mother's womb, God had a plan for your life. Yeah. Yeah. None of us are, are mistakes. None of us are, are just no good. God calls us special. God calls us the apple of His eye. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Nobody's a mistake. Amen. God's got a plan for your life. Everyone in here has a ministry. Amen. It might be different than some other people's, but it's a ministry. It's time to, to rise up in the ministry. It's time to do what God has called you to do. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, every day I look for, for things and, and I look for, for people that can in, inspire me. Amen? I like to be inspired. I, I read the Word of God to be inspired, to be built up, to be encouraged. And, and I listen to people. Even though they may be non-Christians or non-believers, I still listen to what they say. Listen to any kind of inspiration that I can get from them. Amen? And, and notice that, that God can speak through any person at any time. It doesn't matter if you're a preacher or if you're at the back working the camera. God can speak through at any time. Amen. 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 But it's up to us to listen, to have ears to hear what the Spirit of God is saying. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And anyway, I, I was thinking about uh, people in the Bible, Bible that were inspirational to me. And, and I was thinking of different people like Noah. I was thinking about the three Hebrew children. Amen. They were inspirational to me. They, they encouraged me. They built me up. Their faith encouraged me. Their, their stand against sin and compromise encouraged me. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And I began to think about Francis. And Francis' life encouraged me. The sacrifices that he's made to be here right now. Uh, I remember the times when he slept on the floor in, in Edmonton and Winnipeg, you know, taking care of Bishop, taking care of the man of God. He, he's made sacrifices and, and he's left his family and he's come here to live and to serve the man of God. Amen. That's ins inspiring, inspiring to me. Amen. 
I, I admire that. That's not easy to do. That's a sacrifice. Amen. amen. And amen. being a Christian is, is not about taking care of yourself all the time. It's about ministering to others. Amen. amen. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples. Yes. If you have love for one oh, or another. God. And if you love somebody, you're going to take care of them. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you. Glory, Glory to God. But I was inspired by the three Hebrew children and how they took a stand against sin. And that's an example of the way we should be. We should take a stand against sin. No matter what society says and no matter what the, the, the government says or the politicians, you know, everybody tries to be politically correct and say the right things and not offend people and not upset people. But time, it's time to take a stand and, and say what needs to be said and tell people that sin is sin and, and sin will take you to hell, amen? Everybody has their opinions, but people are riding their opinions right into hell, amen? amen. I'm being honest. I'm, I'm telling the truth, amen? amen? What really matters is what the Word of God says. Amen. Because there is coming a day when we're going to stand before God and guess who's going to be there with us? Nobody's going to be there to defend us except for Jesus. Amen. Amen. Uh, our bishop won't be there. Uh, Brother Francis isn't going to be there saying, no, no, well, Eric's a good person. You know, we should let him in. You know, <laughs> no, you're going to be there standing by yourself. And you're going to be judged by the word of God. You're going to be judged by the things that you have spoken, the words that you have, the things that you have done. Amen. Yes. Uh -huh. Those are the things that are, you're going to be judged by. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, I was also reading about Noah and how uh, the Bible says that he found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Uh, God called him a, a just man. The Bible says that, that Noah walked with God. Amen. And uh, I want to be known as a man that walks with God. Amen. Amen. A couple times in the Bible there is, there is men uh, and people said, what manner of man is this? What kind of a man is this? That he can calm the seas and, and do this and that. So they said that about John the Baptist and about Jesus. I want to be known as what kind of a man is this? Uh -huh. Amen. I want to stand up for righteousness. I don't want to compromise. Amen. There's enough preachers and ministers that compromise. But uh -huh. I want to be the real thing. Yeah, amen. amen. Hallelujah. I want people to, to look up to me and, and say that there is a God. And Eric amen. lives holy. There must be something to this. Amen. amen. Too many people compromise. Amen. And your family are always watching. Amen. They see how you act. They see how you talk. Amen. Yes. You're, not, you're not fooling anybody. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. But it, it matters. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The Bible says that, that God looks at a man's heart. A man looks at the, the outside. Yes. He, he looks at you. He, he sees the, the color of your skin or, or what you're wearing. Amen. But God looks at your heart. Yes. And today... I just want to ask you to, to, to examine your heart. Amen. Is your, your heart filled with love? Is it filled with the Spirit of God? Is it, is it wanting to do right? Amen. Or is it full of bitterness and unforgiveness and, and hatred and jealousy? Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. You, you can't hold back part of your heart for a little bit of sin or a little bit of unforgiveness. Amen. Hallelujah. You've got to surrender your heart over to the Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. What condition is your heart in? Amen. Uh, a few years ago, I got audited by the government. They went on my financial papers and all my bills and everything. And that, it uh, it kind of sucks when you're under the microscope of the government, eh? when they're examining everything. Because you're kind of worried, what if I didn't do this properly? Or what if I didn't do that? But I think it's time that, that Christians did an audit on their heart. They examined every part of their heart. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And people don't take the time anymore to, to, to think and consider and, and examine things. Amen. Examine your lives. Examine the way you treat people. Amen. amen. The Bible says be kind to one to another. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Do you live by the Word of God? There's a lot of people that call themselves good people. They have their own uh, set of morals. They have, they have their own moral compass. They, they do what they think is right. The Bible says there's a way that seems right unto man, but they end up with the ways of what? Death. Yeah. 
Amen. Everybody has their own opinion. Everybody has their own way. Amen. What really matters is what the Bible says. Amen. Amen. Well, I only tell a, a little white lie here and there, and that doesn't hurt anybody. <laughs> Wrong. The sin is sin. Amen. Amen. It, it doesn't matter if it's a lie or, or a, a gossip. Amen. Or, or killing somebody. Well, I don't kill anybody. You know, uh, I'm a good person. Well, it doesn't it doesn't count. We have to be born again. We have to be washed clean. Our hearts have to be pure. Amen. Jesus is coming back for a church that's what? Dirty and filthy and, and corrupt? No. Amen. Without spot. Amen. Thank you, Lord. The Bible says there's, there's a way that seems right to man. But their end, their out is the ways of death. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. But we're living in the last days. Amen. Hallelujah. All you have to do is look at the TV. Amen. Watch the TV. Listen to the radio. There's there's wars and the rumors of wars. Amen. There's there's bombings and, and suicide bombers and, and all kinds of things like that. Amen. Hallelujah. But that's just a sign of the times. That means that, that Jesus is coming back. Amen. Hallelujah. The Bible says, Woe unto them that call good evil and evil good. Amen. Amen. We're living in a time when when being good is actually bad. It's not cool. Amen. Hallelujah. The world has become perverted and twisted. Amen. If you uh, if you don't go with the crowd, you're you're considered uncool. If you don't uh, help a person at work punch in their time card for an extra an hour, people hate you. I mean, you try and live a pure life. You try to to live right, and people persecute you. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. There, there's young people that, that watch TV and they watch videos on TV and they, they see these rappers on TV with the, their guns and their money and their cars and their fancy girls and everything. Those things are, are, are being glorified and, and children are, are looking up to that saying, I want to be like that. That's cool. I want to be like that. But that's not cool. Amen. That's, that's sin. That, that'll take you only one place. Amen. And the wages of sin is death. Nothing good comes from sin. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. There was a time when, when being good was the right way. Amen. There, there was a time when uh, nobody wants to wear the white cowboy hat anymore. You watch those old westerns. and The good guys always wore the white cowboy hats. But, but it's not cool to wear the white cowboy hat anymore. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. And as I said, everybody wants to be politically correct. Nobody wants to stand up for, for what is right anymore. I, I hear Christian TV and I, I just get I get ashamed. Amen. Uh -huh. uh, I hear these preachers saying, you know, it, it doesn't matter which, what kind of Bible you read. It, it doesn't matter what kind of music you listen to. It, as long as somehow you can connect to God. Uh, but I think that's a bunch of garbage. Amen. It matters what you listen to. It matters what you hear with your ears. It, it matters what you hear on TV. It matters what you look at on the computer. It's time to turn off the computer, turn off the TV, and turn off those shows. Amen. Live a separated life. It's not easy. People will, will make fun of you. People will, will come against you. Oh, who do you think you are? Holier than thou. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. It's not easy, amen, sometimes. But we have to stand up for what's right. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I've heard preachers say, people on TV say that the Bible is outdated, oh. that churches need to get with the times and accept homosexuality and accept these certain things that, that come with the new church. Amen. But the devil is a liar, amen. amen. Sin is still sin, amen. amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. The Bible, the Bible says that there's many voices in this world. We have to be careful who we listen to. We have to be careful who we hang around with, who we allow to influence us. Amen. Hallelujah. Because it's, I believe it's a matter of life or death. I mean, people will encourage you or people could bring you down and, and destroy you. Their spirits will come on you. Amen. Hallelujah. Especially if you're not strong, if, if you're not a, a strong believer. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, I'm just going to be one more minute. I remember uh, when I first got saved. Hallelujah. Um, as I said, I was living with a girl. 
and uh, talked about different things, talked about getting married or whatever. And uh, but I got saved when I was living with this girl. And uh, one of the first things I learned from God that He taught me, revealed to me, was that it wasn't right for me to live there with her. Amen. Go ahead. Hallelujah. So I wanted to do the right thing. I wanted to do everything I could to please God. And I talked about marriage with her. We decided that we'd get married. But in the meantime, I'd moved to my parents' place. And uh, so I stayed at my parents for a day or two. And uh, I woke up one morning. My mom said, we don't want people like you living in our house, thinking that we're going to go to hell. And so I didn't know what to say. So I moved out. And uh, afterwards, I began to think. I, I thought, how could they do that? How could they kick me out? They didn't, they didn't kick me out when I was sitting, when I was coming home at 7 in the morning drunk. They didn't kick me out when the cops had come to the house looking for me. They didn't, come, they didn't kick me out when I was being evil, doing these all kinds of things. But when I turn my life around and I, I make a stand to do right, I, I get kicked out of my house. But that's just the devil, amen? amen. Hallelujah. So I, I learned early how the, the devil can also influence people. I, I always try and learn. I always try and watch people and I listen to what people say. Amen. And, and sometimes the devil speaks through people and they don't even realize it. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And not too long ago I also learned, my mom told me that my sister wanted to hold some kind of inter intervention and they wanted to keep me from going, church, going to church or something. And I, I thought, that's another thing I couldn't believe. I, I changed my life around. I, I try and do right, and people are trying to have, hold some kind of intervention to keep me from church. I mean, like I said, uh, things have been so twisted around and, and perverted in this day. Amen. Right is wrong, and wrong is right. Amen. <coughs> Hallelujah. They're, they're kicking me out because I, I, I choose to make a stand against sin. But anyways, I want you to be encouraged today. Know that God loves you. God has a plan for your life, no matter who you are. Amen. Hallelujah. I feel good. I feel the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. God bless you. I'm done. Somebody clap your hands. That was a very refreshing. Yes. Very refreshing. Yes. Right from the Lord. Good. And I thought as I saw Minister Eric come. Probably has more of a touch of God if you preach. As good, if not better, than some of the biggest preachers in the biggest churches. God has blessed you with the ministry. And there are two things that hit me when I was preaching. First of all, when he said we have to take stand in front of our families. Because they know when you're testifying one minute and living wrong the next. And for me, the flashback to my family and I thought, Lord, we had our share of drunks. We've had our share of problems. I know of at least one brother that went to jail and another one, there was something happened way, way back and I don't know whether he got jail time or not. I can remember one losing his license and different things. But in our house, mother would be furious if we ever told anybody they didn't belong within the household the messes and the troubles that were going on. And if somebody in town happened to see or overhear or know something about something, if they would go to my mother acting like they were feeling sorry for her, she would rebuke them. Because our family was none of their business. And then I thought of some of your relatives, they can't wait for to see you sin so they can tell the whole reserve, <coughs> tell the whole city, and blacken your name. That's right. So if there's another reason why you should love right, it's because of that bunch of hooligans you have as a family. 
turning on each other. Well, we can't help it. The Lord said it. A man's foes will be living of his own household. There's something else that hit me. When Eric said, we've got Minister Eric, we're going to be careful what we listen to. Your babies don't know one word. And everything that comes out of their mouth, they heard somebody else say. That's right. If you get mad and cuss, use the F word and all of a sudden throw the public and your little one uses it, you should be slapping yourself. And I thought as it was preaching, you see, what we listen to goes into us. And what we're full of comes out of us. That was a tremendous message. That was a tremendous presentation. I thought to myself, as he was sitting, if he wouldn't lose his nerve, if he wouldn't get fearful, I'd love for Bishop Bent or someone down there to use him. You see, it's the anointing that would cut it coming from your heart in love and sincerity. And I learned some things about Brother Eric today. I didn't know. And the strangest thing, the strange thing, is his mother was on the board of directors. What's it she? Or just part of? She helps him with her church. She, she used it. Okay, she helped. She belonged to a church. And it was very involved with one of the biggest churches in town. And they went to church. But they didn't preach being born again. I'm telling you, there's a price to pay when you're saved. If you want what God has for you, I want you to stand and bow your heads. We need to sing a song right now and open this altar. After which, we may have another song or two or testimonies. But Lord.